Okay, so welcome back, back guys. Hapsy Games here, and I have Jason Smith back again talking to us about Cultic. Um, thanks very much for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule uh, to talk to me again and take some questions for myself and my subscribers. I really appreciate it. Um, and Jason is creating a retro style kind of crunchy shooter called Cultic. What I might ask you to do, Jason, I know you probably did this in the video previously, but maybe just in case there's any newer viewers or anything, maybe give us just a kind of a, a rough introduction to the game. Um, do maybe just a brief description. Uh, sure. So Cultic is a horror flavored uh, retro shooter, very inspired by um, like all of the retro shooters I played growing up, the build engine games and Dark Forces and Dark Forces 2 and then uh, games I played later in life like Resident Evil 4 and and uh, and like Condemned and all, all these. So all these games I've played growing up that I really enjoyed um, and took little bits and pieces from them um, and kind of put them into my own my own experience. So Cultic is a um, very much a, a play as you please kind of game. So the uh, like all the, all the combat is designed in such a way that um, players are able to, to take things slow and you know stick to cover and play strategically, or they can run in guns blazing and make use of all the different movement options to kind of stay on the go and and stay out of the line of fire. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a very 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 uh, open ended game. So lots of different ways to use the environment and use the arsenal to your advantage and. Uh, it's been in development since like January of 2021, so coming up on two years now. Um, and those, really, they were really a quick two launch. years, I imagine. Quick two years. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, a lot. A lot has happened in, the, in that time frame, and it's just as far as like, I, and I can't believe it was only. Gosh, it was like just a year ago. I was still. Um, well, I guess a year ago I would have just quit my full-time job to work on cultic full-time so yeah. and that, that feels like it was a lifetime ago so that's yeah crazy how time just yeah. has no meaning anymore and literally we were talking a year ago which it feels like we were talking like a week ago to me <laughs> yeah. so it's and that whole release impending release has just kind of ramped up really really quickly um, and you mentioned just a couple of points there about the freestyle aspect of Coltec. I'm going to get into that actually in, in a couple of questions later on. So it's good that you, you kind of mentioned that in the introduction. So, um, since, so since we've been talking, I suppose, since the last time we were talking, um, the demo actually was taken down. The original one that I had played, I suppose, and I played on the channel. Um, and then there was another re-release of that demo. Um, and now here we are, and you're getting close to the actual release of Early Access. Now, funny enough, I actually asked you a couple of questions about, you know, is this game coming to Early Access? So, you, you, you know what I mean? It's been pretty much, it must have been an incredible year, an incredibly busy year for you. Um, and, and you're kind of in final preparation mode for, you know, first phase of your release, let's, let's, let's call it. Uh, imagine being chapter one, being chapter one, but, you know, nearly, uh, let's just call it a, a complete complete game up until a certain point. So um, chapter one, it releases October 13th. And I had actually first question around that. Is that some coincidence? It's really, really close to Friday the 13th. Is, was that your decision or was that just 3D Ram saying, no, it's going to release then or something? <laughs> uh, that's not actually a Friday, is it? I didn't even no, it's that. not. It's, it's one day okay. off Friday, but it is the 13th. Because <laughs> so when I, when I looked it up first, I was like, man, is that Friday the 13th? What a great day to release it. Well, yeah, it seems good, to be. Would have been a good thing. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> No, no, definitely, definitely not an intended uh, coincidence. Okay. And it's actually yeah. ju just to clear the air. It's actually not going into early access. Um, this has kind of been something that um, I went back and forth on a lot as to whether or not I was going to make use of the early access program or not. Okay. okay. And um, so it's so it is an episodic release model. Um, ah. But, okay. But the episode that. Um, that is releasing in October. It's like it is. It is a fully fledged like campaign in and of itself. So it's a, uh, it you know it's got there's ten maps. There's bosses. All of the weapons are implemented. All the enemies are implemented. Um, the gameplay is 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 pretty polished at this point, And there's extra content on top of it. So like there okay. is more story content to come. But in my mind, like the early access model didn't really make sense because like it's it's not you know this isn't like a game that's that's half finished you know like oh like yeah, core, yeah. Game, core gameplay is all there and um and like the gameplay that you get is is you know it's it's the it's the final 
version of what I wanted Cold 6 gameplay to look like. Um, well, well, that maybe that was my misconception, but that is brilliant news, I think, for for anybody who's been following following this. So, like, I mean, for me, like, I'm going to be when this when this comes out, I'm obviously going to be buying it. And then straight away, I had kind of a plan where I, I'm hoping that Friday the 14th, I'm going to just try and live stream the whole lot of the game um, if I can. Um, hopefully, I can get through to it. Uh, we'll talk about difficulty scaling as well. And some of my subscribers, you know, we have a bit of a laugh in regards to, you know, everybody says I play games on easy. I don't actually play games on easy, but we talk about that later on. But yeah, uh, that's that's really cool. And apologies, maybe my misconception and maybe I was letting people think it was early access. I no, that's okay. picked it up wrong. Okay. So, but that's, no, and it's... that's brilliant news anyway to hear. So, yeah, it's kind of, it is a bit of a unique position. Um, and it's like anytime. You know, people hear that like, oh, it's like here comes like just the first chapter. They're like, oh, well, it's going to be early access. And like the in like the spirit of early access, it, I guess in, in some way, yes, it's not like the entire game and I'm wiping my hands of it and being done with it. But I think just like the the extra like caution that people seem to take with buying games that are in early access. Yeah. Um, because it's like, you know, maybe it's not the developer's like final vision for the game, or maybe this is, you know, really buggy or it's missing features. And yeah. I didn't want, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't want to give people that impression. So like the, the lowered price point is reflective of, you know, the fact that it is just the introductory chapter, but yeah. the introductory chapter is like a full experience. And there is like the Serava mode on, on top of that and all the different difficulty modes. And so, yeah, so it, it's a little bit unique. You know, there are some games that have released in that model, like, um, Gosh, like, like I guess there was kind of a big spree of episodic games back in like, I mean, like maybe like the early 2010s, like Resident Evil Revelations did that whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Revelations did like four, I think they did like four chapters, and and I think you could actually download the first one, and then you, you I think you paid up a little bit yeah. more for each chapter. But no, I mean ten, ten. I think you're saying ten euros, ten or ten pounds, or ten dollars in yeah, around that. It'd be nine ninety nine, so ten US dollars. Um, yeah. I guess right. I guess I, I don't know how that how that all converts out. Uh, but yeah, so it's. Um, I mean, that's a fair price. It's a totally fair price. So I mean, for, that's what I'm hoping will be the yeah. consensus. My my yeah. biggest yeah. fear is is people thinking that it's a rip off. That would be awful. So. Well, I mean, look, if they're getting a full, they're getting a full chapter, a full campaign. What? Well, let's take a ball. I'm picking a ballpark here and saying what eight, nine, ten levels, or something like that. That's plenty. You know, that's that's that's. That's uh, that sounds like it's um, plenty of content for, for for the asking price. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it should. Um, I, I've been trying to gather like average playtime um, from testers, and it looks like I think people could probably expect like between like three to five hours from that first chapter cool. if you're just Very playing cool. it through. Um, so yeah, it's not too bad. And then of course you can play it through on additional difficulties if you want to try out extreme mode and and just really hate your life that's always an option <laughs> yeah well uh, if i do stream it um i'll be forced to play it on higher difficulties because uh, you know that's <laughs> some of my subscribers like to see me <laughs> in pain let's say so well the the higher difficulties <laughs> are um i have put a lot of a lot of time and effort into balancing those to where yeah. they are they're hard but not like super frustrating and like one of the biggest changes that happened recently was the addition of um like if you are above 25 health and you take like a really high amount of damage um instead of just getting killed immediately you get dropped down to one health yeah and then you I've have seen an that opportunity on twitter to i've seen that on twitter yeah yeah, yeah, and like that makes survival so much like even survival on extreme is so much more interesting because it's like, you know, you might take a shotgun blast from nowhere and instead of that just ending your run, it instead throws you into this really tense situation where it's like, oh, I'm screwed. Like I'm in huge trouble, but you do get an opportunity to recover from it. And so like stuff like that, I think is going to make extreme. Uh -huh. And I it's think not... that'll add tension, that'll add a good layer of tension. Yeah. That sounds like it will. And and yeah. I think I think even for me and just just try and think of this you know in relation to the channel for a second people seeing that people seeing that kind of <laughs> tension and stress is actually more entertaining as well so it does sound like it's going to add a little element to that i actually have some questions on the difficulty and we'll get to them shortly um and I, just to circle back um for a second so i th think you mentioned you've obviously gone full time into development i think since the last time we were talking um uh, are you you're working in the 3d realms offices you're working from the home i assume or or combination or, or what i i'm assuming 
Uh, um, I still work at home. Uh, oh, yeah. Three D realms. Three D realms is in is in Denmark, and I'm in Kansas, so it would be a bit oh, okay. of a commute yeah. <laughs> to uh, yeah. to work from the office. I did go visit them um, before Gamescom, though. Um, okay. Since I was going to be in Germany for Gamescom already, I went ahead and made the extra trip to to Denmark and got to go see the office. That was cool. pretty fun. Cool. I wanted to take I wanted to take photos to like show um, to show everybody, but it was like. I couldn't point my camera anywhere that didn't have like a screen with something that I'm not supposed to be showing. On. Uh, so I was like, all right, well, I guess I guess we'll just have to we'll just have to forget that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have maybe taken the front of the office and then said, "Sorry, guys, can't show you." Yeah, ev <laughs> everything inside is confidential. So, but it was cool, you know. I'm like, I've like always, you know, obviously, I've always wanted to be a game developer since I was a kid, and so like, like you know, I got to spend a couple of days. I brought my laptop because I was still getting my Gamescom build ready to go, and so you know, I got to work. From an actual game studio, it was crazy. That was something, you know, something I've always Very wanted cool. to do. Very so cool. that was really neat. So I mean, that that kind of speaks then to the, to, to the scope and, and project just expanding twofold since the last time we talked about by the sounds of it. Because I've been following like your stuff on Twitter. I mean, obviously you've gone into full time because from from what I've been following, you're creating the game assets, the level design, the mechanics, the sounds, and even the music. Um, right. I, I, I have a specific question actually about the music. Uh, I mean, sure. the, some of the soundtracks you, you, you uploaded there on Twitter, I was, I was listening to them back. I mean, do you play an instrument or, or is it like, because some of that is really good. Um, and how, how are you creating that, those, 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 those um, soundtracks or, or what is your instrument or software or something like that? So I do, it is entirely virtual composition. I don't do any live input because I don't okay. play any instruments to save my life. Um, but but you obviously one. have a musical mind, like, yeah? Um, I mean, I didn't like, I didn't really go to school for it. Like, I, I can't read sheet music at all. Um, so my all of my writing is just like putting things, like just, I use software to make something that, that sounds good to me yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, and that's yeah. just working out for me so far uh but yeah i use i use free loops um fl studio and um and then i just have like a big library of orchestral samples oh, and cool. synthesizers and but for cultic specifically i've also got a custom uh sound font that i've put together that um so it's basically like a collection of instruments that have been turned into kind of a a midi sounding uh sound font and so the, the yeah. sound and so the songs are all written using a combination of um that sound font and then i always have like one or two high fidelity instruments where i use like the full quality samples and that's just like like the sound of cultic soundtrack is that it's like it's supposed to sound you know like kind of crunchy and crusty like an old you know super compressed like cd track or yeah, something yeah but yeah. but at the same time i don't want the soundtrack to just sound like i took a song and compressed it you know so it's got a little more like engineering behind it so you've got these parts that sound like an old an old you know an old midi music driver struggling to to play a song but then you've also <laughs> got like these these crispy you know like full quality samples on top of it and i think it creates like a a, pre a pretty unique sounding soundtrack so i'm actually i'm super proud of how the soundtrack turned out i'm excited to to hopefully be able to offer that maybe as like maybe if i can get it on spotify that'd be pretty cool, I don't, be pretty cool. I, I don't know how that works though it's i might have to look into that the one, the one I'm talking about specifically is a, as well. I think it's the soundtrack that's in the trailer as well, which the trailer is uh, absolutely class, guys. If I'll, I'll leave a link in 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 the description here for that, and um, that's the trailer from from Realms Deep. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the one I think you posted on Twitter, which is really really catchy. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. got that combination of I want to go out and kick some ass, and at the same time, it feels to me like uh, this is a bit haunting at the same time, <laughs> if, if if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of the soundtrack is written, um, and I got I got some I got some comments on like when the when the new Realms Deep, uh, or, uh, sorry, the ne when the next fest demo came out, when I removed the demo and then uploaded a new version. Yeah. I got I got some I got some comments of people who were complaining that the soundtrack was the way that it is that, that it wasn't like um, like they they were expecting more like straight up like horror like you know like unsettling like you know just. Okay. Like classic horror, and I'm like, well, like the the point of the soundtrack is is to is to tell a story, right? And the story here is not that you're a you're a, a, a terrified, helpless person. You, you're you're this like, like you know, you're this like badass detective who's like on who is on a mission to to close this case, and you know, you're like you're right now in like smack in the middle of enemy territory with like nothing left to lose, and so it's like yeah. it's like the, the story here isn't that. You know, this isn't like Alien Isolation, right? You're, we're not playing a helpless, scared individual. We're playing a guy with like 
with like half of an armory on his back who's like going who is on this mission to to stop a cult and so it's like so the story the music does tell a story of like you're in a situation that is like that has frightening elements like you are in like a, a nightmare of a situation but you know your your mission is to kick the nightmare's ass not not yes. you know the other way around so um, well my well my feeling still from the demo was that yeah as you say when you start off and even even the even the level that you're playing you come in you you're straight away you're getting into some you know hardcore action but then it, it seems at times it can ramp down and slow down and right. there's a nice blend to that. I think I spoke on that the last time. Um, even with the demo, I I know you've kind of streamlined some of the the level aspect when I when I when I played the demo originally to when I, what I played now. Uh, but even still, that you know that memorable segment where you kind of go in underground and you have to uh -huh. get this key. Um, you know, so that's what I loved about the game. That you know where where it it. It said it's like the the, the 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 action at the start was brilliant, and then it was like it was able to just change the tone some, somewhat, and then go back into the action, heavy action after. So, you know, uh, may, maybe maybe people were com over overly complaining just to complain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah. so if you if you enjoyed that aspect of the demo, then you'll probably enjoy the full game quite yeah. a bit because there's like it, it very much, or you know, I very much tried to continue to strike a balance between like like you'll have. Like uh, you'll have maps that are, are very open ended and very yeah. like large and, and give you a lot of freedom and then those might segue into into a map that's a little more linear and guided and those got because it's like there there's maps where I wanted to just be able to like design a bunch of encounters and then let the player do those however they choose and then there's maps where I wanted to be able to design like set pieces and like specific like you know specific story moments and for those you kind of you kind of have to like funnel the player down a certain path a little bit more. Um, yeah. But each level still tries to like maintain a balance between like open-ended areas uh, where you know you can kind of explore at your own pace, and enemies aren't like all immediately aware that you're there, so you can kind of pick and choose how you approach those situations, and then you know swinging that into more linear guided areas. So you get a little bit of both. Um, well, that sounds great for replayability as well. So I mean, uh, that's yeah. kind of, that's what I kind of felt even on the second demo. I was like, all right, now I can slide. I can do this before. So I was kind of, you know, approaching segments and sort of, I'm going to go, you know, balls crazy here and go mental, or maybe I'll just go sneak around a little bit more or something. So I liked yeah. that kind of freedom to it. So it's it sounds like we're going to get more of that on the full release. And um, what I wanted to say to you was, um, so like, okay, you're like less than a month away from launch. So assuming right. at this stage, um, it's all about bug testing and, and, and final polish. Like, do you? Right. I was going to say to you, do you have like QA play tests? Or surely you have uh, have oh, some yeah. kind of help. I was imagining. Oh, yeah. So. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I've got um. So like, 3D Realms has has a QA team that's been uh, that's been helping me out, and then I also oh, just just I also have you know like friends and other game developers that I know that I you know that I'm I, I've either like talked with them about game development and game design so much, or I've played games with them for so long that I really trust their. Um, their instincts and like their their thoughts on like things that feel good, things that don't feel good, things that are frustrating, things that are too easy, too hard. And so I've I've been having having a little bit of help from there as well. Yeah, if I I did like a big like two week long just like bug pass and QA pass over the game myself, and uh, you know probably recorded like eighty different items that I wanted to fix, um, just some bugs, some balancing stuff like that. And then I, you know, and then I sent it out to the QA teams, and they came back with still like a ton of stuff that I would never have even thought to look at. So because yeah, it, yeah. it's just like it's just stuff that I never do, especially when it comes to like like game pads, because like I never play with a game pad, and so I never know what to what to test. And so it was really nice to be able to get that input. So there um, is game pad support as well, just out of interest. Uh, yeah, 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 right, yeah, that, okay, that was. That, that was actually in the uh, the next fest demo too, so that's been that's been in for a while. Ah, I didn't even know. So, well, anyway, I'll be playing it with mouse and keyboard, same same as, as yeah. you were saying there. But I think that's pretty good because I actually have I have a Steam Deck, so I'm going to give it a go anyway. <laughs> hey, I just got mine too. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's such a cool machine. But um, yeah, I mean that's that's cool to hear about the gamepad too. It just you know some some sometimes I just kind of want to kick back at the TV too. So, <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, Maybe what I, just to follow on from that, I don't know how much I can ask you and how much you can answer or not. But is there is there any way you can maybe give us a quick rundown? So you mentioned maybe a three to five hour campaign. Are you allowed to say how many levels there is, or is that 
I questioned yeah, I think I, I think I, I think I said that earlier. There's yeah, there's ten maps um, ah, and ten two maps. boss okay. fights. Oh, boss fights, yeah, and I have some questions about that as well. But I don't know. Maybe I maybe for spoiler reasons you don't wouldn't want to say anything. But um, yeah, that's cool. To see. So that's cool. So ten levels, two boss fights. That sounds pretty meaty for what people are getting. Um, and that kind of just moves into just I wanted to briefly just I get back to the game in a minute. I kind of wanted to talk about Rams Deep. When what you were there, so you were there. Did I? I think you were because I remember following some of the tweets. Um, did you? Did Cultic have its own stall? Did it have like a showcase? Did could people go and play it? Um, uh, I was I was at Gamescom. I did not I did not go to. Oh, Rome. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, um, I mixed it up with Gamescom, but um, <laughs> yeah. So Gamescom, I was at. Yeah, so I was at Gamescom, um, and that was the first time I had ever been to. A game convention and you know granted i'm i'm 30 freaking years old at this point and i'd never been to one before and so that was it yeah. was cool like a i'm at a game convention like i've never been to one before so that was awesome and then like that's you know getting to be part of because i basically had like three booths that i was having to run between the whole time All I right, had, okay. i had a booth in the indie arena which is where it was like just cultic and you could just come and check cultic out um and uh, although unfortunately when we got there, we were informed that uh, Coltic was too violent um, to be shown to the public. So they had to put me and a couple of other developers in this like <laughs> in this like naughty booth, like it's like the adults only booth. And like none of us, you know, like my game was by far the, the most violent one there. It was like the other, like one of the other games just had like like your player could like drink alcohol, but it was like a, you know it was like a, a kind of cartoony top down pixel art game. <laughs> but they're like, oh, you can drink alcohol, so you have to go and sit next to Coltic, the game where you can chop people's heads off and flush them down toilets, like <laughs> the same thing. Um, so we were, had that, and then 3D Realms had a, a public booth that also had Coltic in it. Um, and then a like a business booth, which is where I did like uh, some interviews with some press. And so it was like running around like the whole time, just like sprinting between all these booths. And it was like Very busy. it's like it's like the the event hall at Gamescom was like it was like procedurally generated. It was like every day they had like changed which doors were open and which like which <laughs> which staircases were one ways and which escalators were blocked off. And it was a mess. And so it was like every day I was like I have no idea how I'm gonna get to. You know, I'm, I don't know how I'm going to get between booths today because it was it was crazy and just an absolute mess. But uh, a ton of fun and getting to meet people like in person who had played the demo, um, and then just like like one of the biggest things with designing Coltic has always been making it like accessible. Um, I'm yeah. I'm not somebody who believes in like uh, like oh this game's designed to be super hard. So like if you don't like it, don't play it. And I'm not, I'm not I don't really I don't have anything against people who do that, but like I'm I'm not one of those developers. And so yeah, yeah. it was really cool to see people come by who weren't big like they weren't big retro shooter players. They weren't really big like first person shooter players, but they really enjoyed the demo. They, I got a lot of comments from people that were like like I don't you know I don't usually play this kind of game, but like that was really well, fun. Well, that's that's good because it, it, you're at least you know you're kind of going out outside what you might consider maybe the default pool of players that might want to pick up the game so that's good um and that probably falls into the maybe because i've a couple of had more a couple of more questions but maybe it might make sense just to skip into the difficulty piece because i know you you, you mentioned there you were you're so accessibility as you mentioned there right um, and and even me looking at the the, the demo recently it's got a ton more difficulty uh, options. So I imagine, and, and it sounds like you, you put in a ton of work into that. So it must have been, I imagine, really complex to try and balance those. Um, is that something that the playtesters focused on then thereafter? Or, you know, uh, what was your thought process between, you know, having, I think there's five difficulties, is there? If right, yeah, you got... You've got uh, casual, standard, uh, hard, very hard, and extreme. And like hard is probably what most like seasoned shooter players are going to want to play. I was going to say, I was going to say, is th is that the recommend recommended difficulty you think yeah, people should if, play on? Yeah, I, I usually I would tell people at Gamescom at least like if you don't like like play the first map on standard just to get to grips with all of cultics like like the movement options and how the weapons work and how the dynamite works and once yeah. you under once you like once you're comfortable with the control scheme then hard is no problem it's like the biggest thing is just like if you're if you're not super used to like first person shooters and especially if like the movement mechanics aren't really your cup of tea then like standard just so that damage is a little less punishing while you get the hang of everything but then like what once you like get to know and honestly like once you get like the timing of enemy attacks and stuff to the point where it's super easy to dodge enemy shots then like you can put it on 
very hard or extreme and just plow through it. So, um, but yeah, like QA has been, I don't think they've been like specifically testing each difficulty out, but because the QA team has people from, you know, kind of all, all different flavors of gaming, some of them are playing it on casual and some of them are playing it on, um, on extreme yeah. or hard. And, uh, yeah. and what's been really interesting is the ones who, so we've got like two different classes of, of players, those who play like games defensively, like they like to stick to cover and, and strategize. And then you got those who are very offensive, who just want to like stay on the move and get up in enemy spaces and just, and just like really go to town. And, and it's been, there's like one boss fight in the game that allows you to play defensively and one that allows you to, or that more so encourages you to play offensively. And it was Ooh. so, it was kind of, it was really interesting seeing how each, like some players would be like, oh, this boss, you know, this boss was super easy, but this one was super hard. And the other players would say the exact opposite because it's just <laughs> like, which one? So those had to be rebalanced so that they were uh, fitting for both play styles. So like you could use either um, either strategy but it's just so interesting because like i'm in cultic in, in every other game i'm a defensive player like i take my time but in cultic i since i have everything memorized i play extremely yeah. aggressively and so it's like i was sending a video of me taking on the final boss to one of the qa testers because like well here like here's my strategy if you if you like see anything that stands out and like the first thing i do is just like sprint straight towards him and just like and just immediately start unloading on him and get like right up in his face and uh and so it's just one of those things that it's uh, it was really interesting to see how those fights uh, went with different people's play styles, and that really helps to balance them too. Because like I hadn't even thought about you know, like fighting the final boss from cover. I was like, no, I just run around the whole time. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it, uh, and I think I think maybe the difficult. I'm going to have to definitely play it on hard, or even worse, I, I imagine first time around because you know I'll be I'll be goaded to do it on stream, but. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just trying to think now how I'm going to approach all of this. But yeah, I, that I, that 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 sounds really cool. Um, and and it's great to see that those multiple difficulty settings. Um, what, what just just another, one other question on the difficulty piece. I wanted to say. Um, you know what? What? What is your kind of balance balancing act? You know, is it is it that the enemies have more health now, or is it that you have you take more damage, or how did you strike that balance? You know. Sometimes, sometimes I think people see, oh no, a difficulty can be padding, whereas it can be just simply, oh now I have to fight a bullet sponge, and you know this yeah, yeah, yeah. single guy is going to take like two hundred hits instead of like yeah. ten. So yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a combination of a few things. So yeah. um, like if you are playing on on standard, then everything's like oh it's everything's like that that's the, the one times everything everything's just standard, and then as you go up in difficulty, enemy health. Um, and their damage up, but does increase, but not by a lot. I think if yeah. you go from standard to extreme, then enemy health increases by like 35%. Um, but okay. what that well, that's does. Not, that's still not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, what it, and, and the reason that it's balanced that way is because, like, Coltic very much it encourages you to go for headshots. Like, headshots are, are, are devastating to enemies. Yeah. Yeah. And so, on standard, it might take like five pistol shots to kill an enemy if you, like, shoot them in the body. And on extreme, you can still take them out in that many shots, but you have to go for the head. So like, okay. you know, it's so you can still you can be in the same rhythm of combat. Like, you know, you can on standard, you can shoot an enemy in the body with a shotgun and kill them with one barrel. Like you don't have to do both barrels. But on extreme, you can still kill an enemy with one barrel, but you have to get the pellets on the head. So it's like yeah. it's so enemies aren't aren't spongier but you have if you want to keep the same rhythm or the same like you know like the sh it's like the same time to kill i think is the stat that people use on yeah. each enemy that you have to start strategizing and like adjusting your aim i, f so I, found, I found myself always kind of guided towards shooting in the head because i think that whole animation for when the head pops off is just so addictive that it's yeah, like, yeah and then yeah. when it slows down sometimes again it's just like okay i'm not shooting anybody in the body it just goes yeah. gonna be headshots but that's just me <laughs> yeah no and that's and that's very much that why like the 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 jib time like the slow-mo is there as like a, as like as a reward for shooting yeah, in the yeah, head like yeah. that is the intent is to like because most enemies have some kind of weak point um you know most enemies it's just like shooting them in the head but then like some enemies are are extremely susceptible to fire and some and so like there's there's usually a way to take an enemy down faster um and on the extreme you're just you know if you if you just shoot enemies in the body they are going to feel very spongy but if you prioritize um okay. like you know headshots and stuff like that so that's skill they, that's skill based that, that's that's exactly what i what i w would want to hear i think everybody else wants to hear yeah because if right. it's skill based you're aiming for the head 
Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a, a bit more accurate in the higher difficulties. Um, I right, and there maybe, are. Yeah, sorry. I was gonna say there are. Oh, no, you're fine. I was gonna say there's, and the other things that change is like uh, on higher difficulties, um, the the dynamics of enemies' attacks change a little bit. So like, um, when an enemy like. Every, every enemy has a telegraph before they attack, so like a pistol yeah. cultist, for example. They they raise their pistol up, and that plays a very specific global audio cue, and then they wait X amount of frames, and then they fire X amount of times, and then they wait X amount of frames before they can attack again. And that's very consistent. You know, that value never changes so that you can learn what enemies' rhythms are. Um, but on extreme, all of those timings are, are smaller. So like, you know, on extreme, an enemy aims, shoots, faster and they shoot more shots like a pistol cultist will raise their weapon and only wait like half a second before they shoot and then they'll shoot five times instead of three and then the the cooldown before they can fire again is shorter um shotgun cultists will throw like full bundles of dynamite instead of sticks um and then like you know uh, so it's there's like dynamics of their attacks that will change as well and then enemy placements are different so like um oh, cool. there, there, there are a few extra enemies in some areas on extreme but it's not like it's not so much like, oh, instead of having five cultists in this room, now there's 20. It's more like, instead of there being five cultists, there's, it's just like the same amount, but two of them are a more difficult version ah, of cultists. Yeah. And and now, like, up on top of this bridge, there's now a Sten cultist, who so, like, the player can't just stand in one place and shoot now because they've got an enemy oppressing them from above with a machine gun. So, like, cool. the, uh, the prioritization going into an encounter might change. Um, on extreme so yeah it's a little combination of different things like damage output uh total health so prioritizing like weak points and then um enemy placement and the like dynamics of enemy attacks changes a bit really cool and i, I actually liked in the demo as well from from the first time i played in the second that the red cultic guys that are throwing dynamite at you as well i got caught out big time first time we countered them it's like what are these guys what so chuck did that i think yeah. they chuck dynamite or something at me as well so yeah, and they're, yeah. the sh they're the shotgun guys are they yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're really cool. So, and actually, that kind of brings me into a small little question: Is is there how many? Are you allowed to say how many enemy types there is in the game? Is there going to be like four, five, six, ten, something oh, like that? Oh, I just put a list together for one of the one of the or the QA lead asked for a list of all the enemies so that uh, they could call them by the right names when they submit reports. So I just sent. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 15 Whoa, whoa I thought you were going to say 15. Okay, wow. It's going to be yeah. even more varied then. That's really cool. Yeah, so there's uh, like there's like five flavors of the basic cultist, and then there's like three different like elite cultists, and then mm -hmm. there's and then there's a, a handful of enemies that are not cultists that are, uh, they'll have to be surprised by if you play the game. Secrets. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll look, look forward to those. Um, so, and, and that was what the one thing that I picked up as well. So you spoke on the bosses. I kind of, I kind of, I, I had a question pre-prepared about the bosses, but you kind of, you've given us, you've given us a good feel and flavor for what they're going to be like. Um, so maybe, maybe to just to go back a bit. Um, so chapter one, um, and it, and really it sounds like chapter one now, you know, it's going to be the, the complete experience as you mentioned. Um, do you have any plans then thereafter or, you know, to cr create more content or is it a time for a break for yourself really or, um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so chapter one is, um, like I said, is, is it going to be the, the first 10 maps and that kind of yeah. tells, uh, it, it tells its own self-contained story, but it does end on a bit of a cliffhanger. And so chapter two, mm. Um, I have kind of like storyboarded and planned out, like I have okay. a pretty good idea of like what maps I want to have and what story I want to tell. Um, and so that, so chapter two, I plan on doing like, unless Cultic like sells two copies and everybody hates it. So chapter two pretty much, um, is what I'm going to start on, uh, probably next year. There's a couple of things I'm going to have to do. Like once the game comes out, um, obviously there's probably going to be a lot of patching that needs to be done yeah, as people yeah. discover little things here and there. And then I'd like to get localization out the door as quickly as I can, um, mm -hmm. so that, you know, it can have like, support for other languages. And then, uh, I really, really, really want to try to get, uh, co-op working for survival mode at Ooh, least. Um, I've, I've, I've always wanted to make a multiplayer game, but I've just never had like the time or resources to do it. And so I want to try it. I don't know if it'll actually happen or not. But and then and then sometime after that, I would like to start on on chapter two. But I definitely I need a break from 
Um, I imagine so. <laughs> I, 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 I need a break from from level design specifically. Like I need, um, I, I'm I'm really like creatively burned out at the moment. Okay. Um, so like I I could shift gears and work on something like localization or something like co-op that's basically just like code. You know, it's all just code. But I'm just like I, I'm so creatively burned out right now that I need a break from from like creating new things. But um, hopefully sometime next year I can I can start on chapter two and get that rolling because yeah. uh, uh -huh. I have a lot of really exciting ideas for maps for that. Um, but it's uh it's all just we'll have to see what happens. You know, all, yeah. the, all that. But, but, but all burnout that's... is the worst thing. Burnout is the worst thing. And, and, yeah. And... Yeah, it, look, I mean, uh, I think I think even from folks who were playing the demo, they're they're pretty hyped for the game. So I don't think that's going to change. And uh, <laughs> well, best of luck with everything. I hopefully it, hopefully it does sell. I'll be buying a copy anyway, and, and hopefully hopefully everybody everybody that's on the channel will do as well. But um, as as just as we just as we kind of move into just one or two couple of more questions. Um, sure. Yeah. I, I, so I th I know pe I know some people asked um, for you know so it's Windows support at the moment. I know some people asked some questions. You know, have you any plans for Linux or you have you any plans for Apple Mac or, or stuff like that? Um, is that something else that you could get caught up in? I suppose next year to try and find some compatibility with other operating systems or something. Yes, I I mean I want to. Uh, I just haven't looked into it yet so like, yeah, i don't yeah. i don't know what all it takes i think it's pretty easy like i think uh unity just exports to those platforms but wow. the, pr the problem will be uh testing because like i don't i don't own a mac so like i can't i can't test the mac version and i i need to be able to test it myself if i'm going to to sell it with my name on it yeah. um so i will have to find a way to to test it and i i don't really want to buy a mac <laughs> so i don't really yeah, want yeah, yeah. to do that but um but you know i want to make sure that people can can play it and especially like i don't know i don't know if it like i i don't think i need a linux version for it to run on steam deck because like i'm running the pc version on my steam deck right now and it runs pretty well uh um, ah, yeah but yeah. but uh you know i so so yes for additional like pc for, like uh, for additional computer versions mac and linux that shouldn't be a problem as long as i can find a way to test them um and, and I, I guess you know even if it's like if 3d realms qa team has a way to test it i trust them so um, Very cool. yeah but uh people also ask about like consoles obviously is, is the bigger porting thing than yeah. uh, than other computer yeah. versions and consoles would be cool but again, I just, I don't know what all goes into it, and it's definitely like porting to another console would take would take time and money, both of which I don't have right now. So yeah. it's like it's one of those things I would like to do, but it's definitely a future consideration. And I think up like like patching and updating on console is probably a lot more difficult than it is on PC, where I can just log yeah. into Steam and push a new version out. Um, yeah. and, and so that would probably be something I would want to do after Chapter Two is out, because Chapter Two would kind of represent like the the completed story idea that i have for cultic right now yeah. so it would be like you know like get get chapter two out the door and then you kind of consider chapter one and two together as like the definitive 1.0 of cultic um yeah. and then and then that version is what is what you use to like start porting stuff but again like that's all yeah so look, far over my head i have no idea where to even start uh, with it so like <laughs> i imagine it's based off the success of the game too so look as i said already here's hoping it's successful for you and Hopefully, the, the the future of Cultic is bright for yourself and 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 for the future development. But yeah, it does sound like you need a break. <laughs> yeah. Um, just w maybe maybe a couple of more questions before we wrap it up. I did want to speak um specifically. So as we spoke on Gamescom. I kind of I mixed up my wording and my questions. Uh, I did want to ask you. I know you weren't at Realm's Deep, but I did watch the full uh, Friday stream. Uh, I, what I got to say there is, on what I noticed in the live chat, every two seconds someone's asked, "Where's the cultic trailer? Where's the cultic yeah. trailer?" So yeah, that, that was that, cool. that was pretty cool, I imagine. So like, I mean, the hype is genuinely there for the game. Um, I was also in the chat every now and then, and I kind of slipped it in as, well, "Come on, cultic!" Um, but no, there was some pretty, there was some pretty cool games. I, my my two favorites were obviously cultic, as I mentioned, and the trailer I thought was really really cool. Was that all your own trailer that you created? Yep. Oh yep. yeah, really cool trailer. Um, and then the other one was the sequel to Ion Fury. I love that game. It was like oh, it yeah, looks yeah. To be Phantom Fury. That looks amazing as well. So they were my two picks. Uh, was there anything that you uh, kind of other other than your own game? Anything that you you know picked up on that that you're excited to play or? Um, I don't know that. Gosh, like 
the thing is like almost almost like all of the games that were shown at Realms Deep, I I was like already aware of because I ah, follow okay. like I follow so many of the developers on Twitter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, like, gosh, I mean, like oh, but maybe time... maybe it's an unfair question because you kind of know these guys, so I don't want to be well, forced yeah, to yeah, think it's, of it's someone like, <laughs> Yeah, like I can't I can't think of one that like that like blew me away at Realms Deep because I you know like I I've, I'm already kind of on all these games radar, yeah, but. Yeah. But I, but I also realize that sounds kind of crappy because like I want to play all of them. <laughs> it's, um, but it's also like I, I don't talk about this super often because it's like it's kind of a hard thing to say without like sounding like kind of a kind of a butthole about. But I'm I'm like super burned out on retro shooters right now because I'm I'm I because I, yeah. I play one every single day. You know, it's like I so it's like in my I have this huge backlog of all of these games from all of these other developers that I follow or I'm friends with and like. But the problem is they're almost all retro shooters and like yeah. I'm just. I work on a retro shooter every single day, and I'm so burned out on them. And you <laughs> don't play so, retro shooter. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, like okay. so. So I'm just like I, and so like I think I think like Incision was the first one out of my backlog that I like that I got to set down and play, and, and like it was great. I had a ton of fun with that. Um, so if yeah, you I actually did a video on myself on that. That's actually a great game, and um, yeah, well, very very enjoyable. Fun. Yeah. But it's like it's like yeah. So I've got I've got this backlog of games that I, to, I need to, to play. To, totally understand. It happens with me as well with like open world games and stuff like that. It's like oh god, I can't face another one. Uh, you know, yeah. you go through a phase. So and like yeah, you, you, I mean retro shooters have taken a big boom recently on, on Steam over the last few years. I found so I can only imagine if you're playing thirty or forty, and it's like oh no, I can't face another one. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was uh, it was like it's one of those things where after like the first like twenty minutes. Or thirty minutes of watching Realms Deep, you start to get like that that feeling again, where you're like, oh god, like I I can't possibly play all of these. <laughs> I don't have the time, and so and that's what sucks is it's like e even if the games themselves aren't like like the like the visual spectacle that would capture you know like an audience at E3. It's like when you see a game on there that's from somebody that you know, you're like, oh man, like it's uh, that oh that trailer looks great, and like I. Like I really want to support the dev and I really want to play the game, and then you add it to your to your wish list that already has like 600 games on it. It's just, oh man. But yeah, yeah it was. Uh, and and to be to be perfectly honest, I I only caught I only watched the first day, and then I went right back into just like dev mode again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so to I, be honest, that's what I watched as well. I think majority of people want focused really on watching the first day. Um, but yeah, I think as I said, they were the standouts, and it was cool, pretty cool to see it in the comments too. So I, I, I said I'd make sure I'd ask you that. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe um, considering all, all the burnout you're experiencing, maybe, maybe we'll get to some lighthearted questions. So, what, what are you playing now? Uh, you're definitely not playing a retro shooter anyway. What are you? You were mentioning Phas Phasmophobia is an update coming out or something there. Yeah. So most of the stuff I've been playing right now has been just things that I can like. Like I can hop it because like right now I'm working like I get up at like like 7:30 get on my computer at eight and I work until like eight o'clock at night like oh, I just like man. sink a ton of and then like I usually try to play something that I can just like like message my friends see if anybody's online hop in play play a little bit and then hop back out so you like yeah, yeah. Uh, doing a lot of doing a lot of phasmophobia lately um, we did a big like a big seven days to die uh, push uh, with a uh, we downloaded a total conversion mod for that and kind of cool. breathe breathe some new life into that but yeah just stuff where like you know i can hop in and and play for a little bit and then and then go to bed ch 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 chill out and not play yeah. the game that you've been creating for two years solid <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 makes sense um you know uh, thanks very much again uh, for jason for taking the time as i said uh, to, to follow up with me um really really great i think the first time i did a, an interview with any developer and was with you um and then it was great really oh, wow. to follow up and it's really exciting right now to 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 know that the launch is coming up as i said uh, i'd be the first person to buy it it's on my wish list already um, I'm going to be planning a stream of that as well. Um, I think everybody uh, that's following me would be like, make sure you're playing it on the high difficulties. And especially after <laughs> after hearing this, they'd be like, there's no way I have. Uh, they're going to ask, let me pussy out on, on, on the easier difficulties. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Um, but, yeah, I really, really appreciate the time. Um, guys, uh, as I said, I'm going to leave all the links uh, for, for, you know, the, the Steam link uh, for Jason's game in the description. Uh, I'll drop his Twitter in there as well. Um, as I said, I'm covering this game. Uh, best of luck with all the launch and everything. It sounds like you, 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 you're you going to need a well-deserved break after all of this. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, ho ho hopefully it works out for you. 
I'll be covering the game, as I said, and, and I've, I have good hopes for it. And it sounds like you're you're really you're really uh, on the ball, let's say, with the release. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's exciting. It's uh, I was like, th this October thirteenth release date was like pretty much decided before I went to Gamescom, and I had no idea if I was going to make it or not. I was like, honestly. I think I'll be able to make it, but like if we come back and QA finds a whole bunch of like game breaking bugs, that you know, then that's gonna be it. Like I won't be able yeah, to hit the deadline. Yeah. So it was very much like a shot in the dark. And like I've never released a game before, so I have no idea like how to how to plan out a release date or anything. But yeah. So I just I just got back and I've just I've been putting in like bonkers hours on it. But I think I feel like I feel like I feel like it's really close. Like the the QA stuff that's coming back now is all really minor, and uh, we got well, a lot of. That's good to hear. Yeah. 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 yeah that's that's yeah. always really good. Um, and I'm so I'm just kind of polishing up some a couple more like survival maps that I wanted to have in the build, and uh, and just getting stuff ready on Steam. And then I have uh, I need to still do a whole bunch of achievements that I need to add in. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, achievements. Yes, I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit of a, an achievement hog as well, so I'll be going after those. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. Uh, I um, I kind of posed to the uh, the cultic Discord uh, just like if anybody had ideas for achievements because like, you know it's I just something I've never really thought of doing before so I was like yeah let's let's get those ideas in there so hopefully I'll have some fun ones in there. If people is there one for a headshot? I think think that should be good. Oh yeah, there is. <laughs> there, oh there yeah, is. perfect, perfect, perfect. But uh, yeah, thanks again, Jason. Um, really, really appreciate you taking the time. Um, hey, you bet. But, Guys, if you've enjoyed what you've seen today, please consider supporting me, subscribing, and as I said, also, please check out uh, Jason and his game. I'll leave all the links down below. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.